In this problem, we're given a circle, circle O, and that means the center of the circle is point O, and we're given the diameter AB, so the diameter is a cord or a line that goes through the center and connects or touches the points on the locus or collection of points in the circle. So this is our diameter AB, and we have a cord as well. The cord is CD. Now, a diameter is also a cord, but this cord, CD, is not a diameter because it does not go through the center. And they meet at this point right here, that's point E. So we're also told that the distance from E to B is X. So we can label this as X. And we're also told that the distance from A to E, this distance right here, is X plus 9. And the last thing we're told is that distance CE is x plus 4. And we're asked to find all the values of x that could work here. Now, when I first looked at this, I didn't think that there could be a limit to the values of x. I thought, well, you know, there's not enough constraints here. x could be anything. But there are some things we have to remember in circles when you have um, two chords intersecting, and especially when one of the chords is a diameter. So first of all, when you have a diameter, or a radius that, that crosses through a chord and hits the chord at a midpoint, we know that it is perpendicular right, to that line, and we know that it bisects that line. So here, that's a given, right? We're told that this um, is a diameter, and we're also told that we're given this, this chord right here, and we're told they're given at right angles. Now, it doesn't have to say that necessarily, but you might notice sometimes they'll label the right angle in there. So if they say that it is perpendicular to the chord, uh, then it automatically bisects the chord. Or if they say it bisects the chord, that also means it's, it's perpendicular. But in this case, we're told is that the um, diameter is perpendicular to the chord, so we know it bisects it or splits it in two equal pieces. So if we know that CE is x plus 4, we also know that this length right here is also x plus 4. And at this point, we can go a little bit further, because whenever, whenever you have two chords that cross in a circle, right, the product of the segments is proportional. So here, A times E, uh, AE times EB, the product of these two segments, 1, 2, is going to be equal to the product of these two segments right here. And so because of that, we can set up an equation, right? So here, let's do that. The product AE times EB, so that's x plus 9 times x, it's going to be equal to the product of x plus 4 times x plus 4. So now our job is to solve for x in this equation. So let's do that. In the left side here, we have x times x, that's x squared, x times 9, that's 9x. On the right hand side, we distribute x times x is x squared, x times 4, that's 4x, and then another 4x, and then lastly, 4 times 4 is 16. So if we simplify the right-hand side here, 4x plus 4x is 8x, right? We still have plus 16 and x squared, and on the left-hand side, we have x squared plus 9x. Now here you might be thinking, oh, we'll have to do something with the quadratic formula because we have an x squared, but if we subtract x squared from both sides right here, right, the x squareds cancel out. So these cancel out, and we're left with 9x equals 8x plus 16. Next, I would subtract 8x from both sides. And we're left with a nice, easy, basically two-step equation now. We have x equals 16, right? So once we subtracted x squared from both sides, we reach this step right here, and only two steps to go. We subtract 8x from both sides, and x equals 16, and that's our answer. All right, so what we should remember, is, going back to these kind of circle problems, if we have two chords that cross, the product of the segments is equal, and if we have a diameter that, that crosses a chord, or a radius that crosses a chord uh, at a right angle, then it bisects that chord or cuts it into two equal pieces. And the converse is true, right? If it is perpendicular to that chord, um, I'm sorry, if it bisects that chord, it, then it must be 
perpendicular to it as well. So it goes both ways. And I think those two theorems are going to be central in a lot of circle problems. Thanks.